it takes the heart out of farming. It takes the skill out of farming. It takes, to me, it takes the pride out of farming. So I'm out here in our charred field today. Uh, I've come out here actually to work out whether it's economic to pick this stuff or not. And uh, I reckon it's economic for me, but I don't think it's gonna be economic for us as a business. 30 years ago, um, I used to grow lots of spinach and chard, and uh, we used to come out and, and just pick it by hand. In fact, I had one particularly nimble picker, I remember she was called Tara, and she used to do a lovely job of it. It was a bit slow, and it was highly dependent on having a, a very well-motivated and skilled picker. And kind of over the years, we started growing more and more of it, and then uh, we heard there was this machine which would cut spinach and chard, and it was a wonderful machine, cost about 30,000 pounds. It has like a bandsaw blade that goes along the, the bed, and it's many, many times faster. Huge improvement, but the problem is, you have to grow a perfect crop for the machine to work. There have to be no weeds in it, you know, no blemishes, no pest damage. So on a good day, it works really well, but so often, it doesn't work. And it kind of seems in some ways sort of symptomatic of what's gone wrong with agriculture. You know, the scale has got bigger and bigger. It's become de-skilled, uh, it's become dependent on, on machines and it's become tremendously wasteful. So the sort of mixed farming that my father started with um, back in 1951, where you would have sheep and beef, dairy, you know, he had pigs, we grew grain, we grew grass, you know, it was a proper mixed farm generating a lot of the fertility within the farm. You know, that's a thing of the past, really. I mean, all the farms that are growing now are, you know, large scale producers, people with three, four hundred cows, even a thousand cows, and it's all monocultures to feed them, you know, a very impoverished environment in terms of diversity and, and, and richness. You know, and indeed, if you're growing vegetables, you know, very few large-scale vegetable producers would grow, you know, the sort of hundred crops we grow, you know, you would specialise in growing, you know, root vegetables or salads or brassicas, you know, a very narrow range. And that is favoured by mechanisation because you can then buy the machines to deal with those particular crops. So I asked myself, what, you know, why do I care? Why does it matter? And it matters partly for the environment. The more you're driven towards this kind of uniform system of cropping, you know, that's terrible for the environment. The environment likes diversity and it really doesn't like all the pesticides that many farmers would be using to achieve that uniformity. And it, you know, it's, um, it takes the heart out of farming. It takes the skill out of farming. It takes, to me, it takes the pride out of farming. So all that specialisation, it's driven by a number of things. <laughs> um, you know, the price of food, you know, in the UK, people spend about 10% of their disposable income on food. That's all food. You know, <laughs> obviously vegetables are a tiny part of that. I reckon most people spend more money on their mobile phone every week than they do on their vegetables. It makes me quite upset, but those are people's, so that, you know, those are the sort of priorities which people have sort of set. So, you know, we, we find ourselves obliged to produce this food so cheaply. So that's one of it, the price. I mean, the second, you know, the, the supermarkets, you know, they don't, they don't want to deal with small producers producing a few hundred kilos of a varied product. They want someone who's going to guarantee, you know, that they're going to deliver a hundred tons of charge, you know, which will all be between 10 and 15 centimetres long and completely blemish free and they're going to do it 52 weeks of the year and if they can't grow it in England they're going to get it from Spain or California and you know it's just completely unsustainable it's unsustainable in an environmental terms it's unsustainable in human terms it's unsustainable socially but you know it's just really really difficult to sort of break out of this paradigm i do think producers small producers do have to come to club together in, in how they um, market their produce you know and i think we've got a fantastic model here with uh, our cooperative south devon organic producers you know they all bring it here to riverford where we pack it and distribute it i think that is a a really really um, good model and I think it's one that could be applied elsewhere. So I really want to challenge the assumption that being successful means bigger machines, you know, it means more specialisation. I want to find a smarter way of farming. Amid all that specialisation and march to scale, there's Riverford and we're kind of, yes we have grown into being a large business, um, 
but we're also a bit of a freak. <laughs> we, don't, we don't really do things the way other people do them. We're still growing a hundred different crops of vegetables. You know, still quite a lot of the work is done by hand. Uh, and we have this tremendous diversity on the farm and I want to look for ways to actually enhance that rather than reduce it. Um, but at the same time, produce vegetables which are you know, affordable and accessible to everyone.